welcome to our kids service. We are so excited for you to see everything that we have for you. But before we do that, we need you to stand up and make some room because we're gonna jump into some worship. Hey kids, let's put our hands together as we sing greater. together. some spots here. Maybe a little happy smiley face. Yeah, I think that looks good. Hey creative friends, I am so glad you're here. We've had a great series celebrating how God made each of us with our very own kind of creativity. And just what is creativity? Say it with me if you know. Creativity is using your imagination to do something new. That's right. God is more creative than we could ever imagine, and God made us to be creative too. 
And just like we've talked about all month, creativity goes way beyond just painting or playing an instrument. There are so many different ways to be creative. God made each of us with an incredible imagination and it's amazing to see the things that we can come up with when we imagine. Let's take clouds for example. At first glance, it might look like a regular cloud, but if you use your imagination, what does this cloud look like? Huh, it looks like a cat to me. What do you see? Obviously, it's not a cat. It's a cloud, but our imagination allows us to make something new. And that is so cool. Everyone's imagination allows them to make new things out of these clouds. And it's awesome to see your creativity at work. Today, we're going to learn about how the Israelites honored God with their creativity. But before we get into our Bible story, let's start with our big answer. What is the big answer? It's the answer to the big question. This is the question you should get from that important adult in your life, and that is, what did you learn in Kids Church today? And our big answer for today is use your imagination to honor God. And our memory verse for this series comes from the book of Ephesians, and it says, we are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. Ephesians 2.10 Today's story comes from the second book of the Bible, the book of Exodus. In Exodus, we can read about God's faithfulness to the Israelite people. This story took place after the Israelites had been enslaved in Egypt for hundreds of years. These people cried out for help and God sent a man named Moses to lead them out of Egypt. The Israelites crossed through the middle of the Red Sea. They traveled toward the land God had prepared for them. God led them in a pillar of cloud by day and fire by night. God called Moses to come to the top of Mount Sinai. There on the top of the mountain, God gave Moses many instructions. Some of the instructions were commandments that were meant to help the people live the way God wanted them to live and help them keep a close relationship with God. God also gave the people a plan to build a very special tent called the tabernacle. Now this wasn't the kind of tent you'd use to go camping. It was much bigger. We don't know exactly what the tabernacle looked like, but here's one way to imagine it based on the description in the Bible. This tent would have been beautiful and highly decorated. It would have been very special and a holy place where God would live among the Israelite people. God's instructions for the tabernacle were very specific because every detail mattered. Moses came down from the mountain and he told the people the exciting news about the tabernacle. Even better, Moses told them that God had invited all of them to participate. God had very specific plans for the way the Israelite people should build it. God gave special creative gifts to skilled artists who could craft all different parts of the special tent. While everyone would have a chance to help, God knew it would take someone very special to lead the work. God chose a name, a man named Bezalel to oversee the building plans. Listen to what God said about him in Exodus 31, 2 through 5. I have chosen Bezalel, son of Uri. I have filled him with the Spirit of God. I have filled Bezalel with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skill. He can make beautiful patterns in gold, silver, and bronze. He can cut and set stones. He can work with wood. In fact, he can work in all kinds of crafts. Wow, Bezalel was the perfect choice to lead this big building project but God knew he wouldn't be able to do it alone. So God chose a man named Oholiab to help. Together, Bezalel and Oholiab would be able to lead the other people to build the tent just as God had instructed. This is how Moses described the two men in Exodus 35, 34 through 35. The Lord has given both Bezalel and Oholiab the ability to teach others. The Lord has filled them with skill to do all kind of work. They can carve things and make patterns. They can sew skillfully with blue, purple, and bright red yarn and on fine linen. They use thread to make beautiful cloth. Both of them have the skill to work in all kinds of crafts. The people gladly gave what they had to help build the tabernacle. They brought valuable and beautiful things like gold, silver, bronze, yarn, leather, and wood. The people actually gave more supplies than what was needed. And the tabernacle began to take shape. God chose Moses' brother Aaron and his family to serve as priests in the tabernacle, and the people made special clothes for the priests as well. 
the people followed God's instructions completely, and eventually the tabernacle was finished. They had completed the work just as God had commanded Moses. Check out what happened next. In Exodus 39, 42-43, Moses looked over the work carefully. He saw that the workers had done it just as the Lord had commanded. So Moses gave them his blessing. When everything was finally in place and the priests were ready, a cloud covered the tent, and the glory of God filled it for everyone to see. The Israelites got to do something important that God had asked them to do, and they got to use their skill, their creativity, and their imagination to do it. They worked together and completed the work God gave them. They worked hard, and they honored God by building the tent that God had asked them to build. And when we think about this story, we can think about how God gave each of us our imaginations and our unique abilities. We can use those things in creative ways to honor God. In fact, that's something you can do every day. It's really cool to look back and see how the Israelite people built the tabernacle. They followed God's instructions and they were also able to use their imagination and creativity as they worked together. Think about the men who led the Israelites. God had given each of them special skills and talents as well as the ability to teach others. The Israelites used their creativity too as they brought all sorts of valuable materials that they could use for the project. There's a lot we can learn from the Israelites in this story. We can think about how we can use the creativity God has given us. We know that God created us for a purpose, to love God and to share God's love with others. Each day, you can use your imaginations to find new ways to do that. The tabernacle was a place where the Israelites could gather and worship God. Later, the people gathered to worship God in a temple. Jesus himself would come and worship God in the temple as well. And now today, when we get to come to church to worship God, we put our faith in Jesus as our Savior, we have God's Holy Spirit living inside of us, and because of the Holy Spirit, we can now worship God anywhere, anytime. Remember, creativity is using your imagination to do something new. I bet you can think of some great ways to honor God with your imagination and creativity. Just like our big answer says, use your imagination to honor God. Oh, look at that cloud. That one kind of looks like a, a unicorn. Huh. Oh, what does that one look like? It's time for Memory Verse Breakdown! Hey kids, today we're gonna break down this week's memory verse. Are you ready? Okay, here's this week's memory verse. You think you got it? Try saying it out loud. All right, let's take some words away. Think you still got it? Try saying it out loud again. All right, let's bring those words back and see how you did. Did you get it right? Awesome. Well, that's this week's Memory Verse Breakdown. How'd you do? Memory Verse Breakdown! Yay time! Hi everyone! Uh, on the count of three, I want you all to laugh with me as loud as you can! One... Two, three! Ah! <laughs> oh, oh boy, oh, that was fun. But uh, I hope you got all the giggles out because we're about to play a Try Not To Laugh Challenge. The rules are simple. First, I need everyone up on your feet. I'm gonna tell you some side-splitting, hilarious Bible jokes that would make any dad proud. If you think you know the answer, shout it out! But be careful not to laugh! If you laugh, please take a seat. 
Anyone standing after all eight jokes will be crowned the Try Not To Laugh Champion. All right, serious faces on. Here's the first joke. Why didn't Cain present a good offering? He wasn't able. <laughs> I get it? Because his brother's name is Abel, so he wasn't... Uh, oh, never mind. I'm just getting started. Let's see how you handle this next joke. What do a crab without a shell and Jesus have in common? They're both unshellfish. <laughs> okay, I think I see some of you out there trying not to laugh. Here comes joke number three. Why don't Ruth and Joshua get along? Because Joshua judges Ruth. <laughs> Get it? Like the books of the Bible, Joshua, then judges, and then, no? Uh, okay, tough crowd. Moving on to the next joke. Do you know who owned the first iPad in the Bible? Moses. God actually gave him two tablets. <laughs> okay, whoa. Okay, now that's a good one because the Ten Commandments were written on tablets, so I'll... Uh, anyway, uh, here's joke number five. How much land did Abraham's nephew own? Lots! <laughs> because Abraham's nephew was named Lot, so he owned Lot. <laughs> well, anyway, you get it. Here's joke number six. Why wouldn't Pharaoh let the Israelites go? Because he was in denial! <laughs> okay, that's good! <laughs> he was in denial! Like the Nile River? Oh, if you don't think that's funny, I seriously have to question your taste in comedy. Here's the next joke. What type of music does Goliath hate? Rock! <laughs> yeah, believe it or not, I think it may have given him a little bit of a headache. <laughs> oh, anyway, uh, here comes the last joke. What's Peter's favorite card game to play? Go fish! <laughs> oh, wow! If, if you're still standing, congratulations. You are officially the Try Not To Laugh Champion! Thank you so much for being with us today. But before you leave, have that important adult in your life go to lifechurchgreenbay.com slash kids where you can grab our Kids Connect card there you can discuss our big answer, the memory verse, and even more. We love you so much. Have a great week.